If you look at the heart, you know that it looks like a cone-shaped organ. But this is not just one whole structure. Inside the heart, if you look, you have four components. And if you look at the four components, you have the chambers in the heart. You have two chambers in the upper portion of the heart. We call that the atrium. You have one on the right side and one on the left side. The lower chambers are called the ventricles and you have one on the right and one on the left. The oxygenated blood or the dirty blood comes into the right heart and from here the blood is being pumped into the lung. And in the lungs, the deoxygenated blood becomes an oxygenated blood or the clean blood and that comes to the left heart. From the left heart, that oxygenated blood is taken into this large blood vessel and goes to the rest of the body. Now, there is a kind of a wall or a septum that separates the two upper chambers and the two lower chambers of the heart. So this particular chamber between the two lower chambers, if there is a defect in that septum or the wall, then you call that a ventricular septal defect. Ventricular septal defect is the commonest congenital heart defect that is seen. In families who have congenital heart disease, there is a higher chance of having any form of congenital heart disease in the subsequent you know, generations. And this is quite evident in families where parents have a child with a congenital heart disease, say a ventricular septal defect. So there is a 50% chance that the next child will have a heart disease. Besides that, chromosomal anomalies are noted to predispose to ventricular septal defect. But the most commonest chromosomal anomaly is the trisomy 21, which commonly we call Down syndrome. In Down syndrome patients, they have a 50% chance of having any form of congenital heart defect, and one of them is ventricular septal defect. If an infant presents to you with a ventricular septal defect, that means they are definitely symptomatic. Because if the defect is very small, an infant will not present with any kind of symptoms. So they need to have a significantly large kind of a defect. Most of the time, the symptoms they present is the mother feels that the child is not feeding well and is sweating and is very breathless. So these are the common symptoms that we have. Besides this, the parents also complain that the child has recurrent respiratory tract infections and that is all related to the large ventricular septal defect. Interestingly, adults with ventricular septal defect do not have symptoms at most of the time because the reason being, if they had symptoms, they would have come to us at an earlier stage. Because they don't have any symptoms, so they tend to present to us at a later stage. They may present with symptoms related to the defect or they may present with symptoms as a sequelae to the defect. Because an adult patient with a long-standing ventricular septal defect can have problems related to valves of the heart wherein they'll have leaking aortic valves and that could be one of the presenting symptoms or they might come to you with some form of rhythm disturbance that means their heartbeat might be irregular or they might be beating fast so that could be one of the symptoms or they could come to you with some with an advanced stage of ventricular septal defect we call it the Isomanger syndrome or complex wherein as I mentioned to you earlier the blood pressure within the lung becomes so high that the patient will start to look blue rather than in heart failure. So these are the various ways in which an adult can present to you. And many a times the adult may just be asymptomatic and they might just go for a routine medical examination and then you'll find that they have some kind of a heart murmur and then on further investigation we can establish the diagnosis of a ventricular septal defect. There are some environmental factors that are related to congenital heart problem. Well, one of the issues is maternal alcohol consumption. Yeah, it is known fact that mother who is consuming alcohol during the pregnancy, the child having some form of a congenital heart disease is prevalent, especially a ventricular septal defect. Another issue is also maternal diabetes, trying to have a tight control of the sugars, all that is very important. 
if you want to prevent this kind of problems to happen. Moreover, if there is a mother who is an elderly lady, the chance of having a child with a congenital heart disease is more than a younger lady. So probably if that is the case, they need to have some form of a screening done during the time of pregnancy in the form of a fetal echocardiogram. And another point is that in families where if they have one child with a congenital heart disease, it is better that subsequent pregnancies, the screening and follow-up is more stringent. An adult, when they are born, they are born with a ventricular septal defect. It doesn't develop later. But there is acquired kind of a ventricular septal defect. This happens in elderly people who have a heart attack or a myocardial infarction. What happens is if the blood supply to the area of the ventricular septum gets severely damaged or there is no blood supply and that septum gets severely damaged, then you can have a ventricular septal defect. So that kind of a ventricular septal defect happens in more elderly people who have a coronary artery disease, but that is not very common. A VSD can firstly be diagnosed based on symptoms, especially if the VSD is very large, then you can have symptoms of heart failure, that means you're breathless and your child is not feeding well and there's failure to thrive. So these are all the symptoms that you can have. Besides the clinical examination, the confirmatory diagnosis will be by doing an echocardiogram or a heart scan. Before we proceed for any kind of invasive treatment, what we tend to do is we have to assess what is the size of the VSD. And if the VSD size is very small, and if the child or the adult is not symptomatic, then we will not do anything, we'll just follow up the patients. But if the child is having symptoms of heart failure, then we will first put them on medical therapy. That means we will try to reduce the lung congestion and we will also try to reduce the increased working of the heart so that the patient's failure symptoms doesn't get aggravated. So if failing all this medical management, then the last option is to do some kind of intervention. The intervention that is being predominantly advised in the current era is to do a surgery to close the defect. But there are instances where the ventricular septal defect is very small and then you might need to do some kind of intervention. Then we could get the cardiologist or the interventionist. Ventricular septal defect closure is done with the support of cardiopulmonary bypass machine. Essentially, the surgery is done under general anesthesia. And of course, we do pre-medication and preparation for the surgery and we fast the patients overnight and on the day of surgery we put the patient under anesthesia and before the actual surgery starts we will get the anesthetist to put some you know lines or cannulas into the body so that we can give blood transfusion or medications through that. Once that is all done we will proceed with the surgery. The surgery is done by opening the breastbone and once you open the breastbone, you can, there is a covering around the heart that's called the pericardium. We open the pericardium and then we see the heart. In order to do this surgery, we need to stop the heart for a short while. The way in which the heart is stopped is we connect the heart to some pipes, to a machine that's called the cardiopulmonary bypass machine. So once we have done the connection, the machine takes over the function of the heart and the lung. And then what you do is you stop the heart for a while. And, what, and depending on where the defect is, we will make the opening in the heart. Usually we make the opening in the right side of the heart, over here, and once we open that, we can easily identify the defect. And through that, we will see the defect, we will close the defect using a patch. The patch can either be some form of a synthetic material, or it could be a natural material, which is the pericardium, which is the covering of your heart. So these defects are closed with the help of suture materials and the fineness of the suture depends on the age of the patient. 
If the child is very small, like a newborn child who needs a defect closure, we will use very fine sutures. And if it's an adult patient, we will use slightly bigger sutures. And then there are sometimes the defect might be very close to this blood vessel of the lungs. If that is the case, we might have to open over here in order to close the defect. Very rarely we make opening on the ventricle itself in order to close the defect. And that it doesn't happen very often. It's very rare. The key point is optimizing the patient's general condition before the surgery. The reason being, if a child is in severe heart failure, then we will need to continue the medications for the heart failure so that the child doesn't come with lung problems or any infection at the time of the surgery. Number two is, if it's an older patient going for any kind of a surgery to close the hole in the heart, then we will need to get some kind of a dental assessment to check the oral hygiene. Besides that, most of the patients are, you know, are admitted about a couple of days before the surgery and we will do blood workups to make sure that they don't have any infection and also we'll need to screen some blood because this kind of open heart surgery re usually requires blood transfusion and uh, besides that we will also need to make sure the patient has good physiotherapy so that the patient's lungs are all fully well optimized before proceeding for the surgery. With regards to diet restrictions, absolutely no diet restrictions for this. Basically, you can take any kind of a diet.